on to the 10th question. The function f is defined by f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 12x plus 13, for which x is between 0 and a, and a is a constant. Express f of x in the form of a open brackets x plus b squared plus c, where a, b, and c are constant, and that is basically telling us to complete the square. So of course the first thing we're going to do is write out the main points that we have to get done. And then after that, you'll notice that a is actually just 2 because you're going to take out what's common between 2x squared and negative 12x. So then that will leave you with 2 open brackets x squared minus 6x close to bracket plus 13. Then we're going to try to get rid of the square. So then it's going to be x minus 3 squared. What we're going to do is you see that negative 6x, you're going to divide that by 2, the coefficient, right? And negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Then you're going to take that negative 3 and you're going to square it. So it's going to be 9, and you're going to place a negative in front of it. After that, we're going to move in the 2, so it's going to be 2 open brackets, x minus 3, close the brackets, squared, and 2 times negative 9 is negative 18, plus 13, and then negative 18 plus 13 is negative 5, and that is it for this question, and that is a total of 3 marks. Now part 2 is asking us to state the value of a for which the graph of y is equal to f of x has a line of symmetry. So when it does have a line of symmetry, it means it can conclude that you can have a part where it is a one-to-one -one function. So I'm just going to draw out the curve for you. Right now, the line of symmetry should be 3 because using the completed square, we're going to uh, make it equal to 0, this part that I've just underlined. And in order to do that, you'd have to make x 3. So if I just draw out like a small sketch right now, You'd notice that um, between, actually they told us it's between 0 and a. We don't know what a is, right? So we know 3, and we have 0. So how do you get from 0 to 3? Add 3. And that's the center, right? So then how do you get from 3 to a? You're just going to add 3, and that is 6. So then, obviously, a ends up being 6. And what you can do is basically multiply 2 by the x, which is 3 as a quicker way. So then that would be 6, and that is a total of 1 mark. So that's it. We're done with this part. On to the third part. When a has this value, find the range of f. So we're going to try to find the range right now. And what we're going to do is make x equal to 0. So we're going to use the completed square, and in order to make that part 0 again, remember we had to make x 3 in this case. So then y would end up equaling to negative 5. So that is one of the limits. Then we're going to use the original equation where y is equal to 2x squared minus 12x plus 13. And we're going to make x 0. So then y would end up being 13. So then the limits or the range is between negative 5 and 13. The range is the y-axis. So then the curve just moves from negative 5 to 13 and no more. So then f of x or the range of f, f is between negative 5 and 13 and that is it for this question and that is a total of two marks now part iv explain why g has an inverse and g is the same function 2x squared minus 12x plus 13 but this time x is greater than 4 and we have to obtain an expression in terms of uh, x for the inverse of g okay so of course write out what we need to know and what we can do here is you can see in the graph that I have drawn that it has an inverse and it's because it's a one-to-one -one function. Why is that? It's because the 4 is greater than 3, right? So you can see in this graph or the sketch that I've drawn, if you place 4 right there, it's past the center. So of course then, um, why wouldn't have more than one answer? It only have one part that it intersects or crosses, so it's just one answer. So anything that's below three, between zero and less than three, or exactly three, has is a one-to-one -one function. And anything that is exactly three and uh, below six is also a one-to-one -one function, just not the whole thing. So then part B, we have to find the inverse right now. And all you're gonna do is we're gonna use the square, uh, complete square form, because it's a lot easier, and we're gonna uh, switch x and y, and then we're going to try to make y the subject of the formula again. So y is equal to 2 open brackets x minus 3 squared minus 5 
We're going to switch it around. x is equal to 2, y minus 3 squared minus 5. We're going to move the negative 5 to the other side, becomes x plus 5. Then we're going to divide that by 2. So then x plus 5 over 2 is equal to y minus 3, uh, open bracket squared. And then you're going to move the square to the other side, so it's going to be the square root of x plus 5 over 2 is equal to y minus 3. So at the end, y is equal to the square root of x plus 5 over 2 plus 3. Don't mess up the signs. So then that is it for the inverse of g. I'm just going to write it out again. And that is it. That is a total of 3 marks. Congratulations. We are done with this question. One more question for this paper and we are done.